guys, welcome back to my channel. So, today is Friday, and you know what that means. Fabric Friday! Yeah, I know, we haven't done a Fabric Friday in a while, but we are doing them monthly now, so this is the Fabric Friday for June. Although, it will probably end up being uploaded in July. Sorry. Hopefully you guys have seen my last video, which was my fabric haul vlog type thing in Singapore. And you would have seen all the billions of fabric that I got, but then the very last fabric, which was my beautiful, beautiful flamingo print. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Okay, so here is the print and, oh my God, it feels so good. Like it's really, really light and airy, super like drapey. I cannot wait to do something with this. And I have a couple of ideas. Maybe you guys can help me out. First of all, let's talk about this fabric. So this is a flamingo print and it is absolutely beautiful and it's also the wrong way round. Here we go. So all the flamingos are kind of like going downward like this and it's just like a really, really pretty fabric. This fabric is actually kind of a specialist fabric so it was a little bit more pricey but it was really, really nice. So you know how I like a bold print and this is pretty bold so it was like a moth to a flame. Like I could, there was not much I could do about it. I was just stuck in the lights and had to get it. This fabric is a jacquard burnout chiffon. I know, that's like basically three types of fabric in one and that's why it's kind of a specialist fabric. Now, just in case you're wondering, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. How can you be a chiffon jacquard burnout? But let me explain it. So, first of all, it is a jacquard. So jacquard basically means textured. The way that it's been woven together, it is textured and has raised bits at the front and also at the back. So that's kind of what classifies it in the jacquard area of fabrics. I will give you a few close-ups so that you can hopefully see it, but there are like raised bits in the print as well as bits that are super, super sheer. On to the next bit, which is burnout. Burnout fabric is basically like two different fabrics that are often like woven together. So there's a top layer and a bottom layer and it goes through either a chemical process or there is another process. I'm not quite sure what that is, but I only know of like the chemical one where you kind of like dip it in a solution. And what it does is it burns away parts of the top layer of fabric. The bottom fabric is not affected, but the top fabric is. So you often see this in velvet fabrics, uh, where you'll have like velvet, and then you'll have like a pattern that is kind of like burnt into it, and it's like sheer underneath. So you often see that. That's like the most common type of burnout fabric that you see. Back in fashion school, uh, for my final project, I actually used burnout fabric. I used a silk and a chiffon blend. So it was silk at the top, chiffon underneath. And what I did is I burnt out a whole like pattern um, on it. And then when I put it through the solution, all of that kind of like a melted away and what was left underneath was the chiffon and then you can see the silk bits on top so it's a really really cool fabric to get quite creative with if you're trying to like create your own fabric you can actually buy it from a few specialist places you know if you're interested i will leave um a few links below of places where you can actually buy devore fabric and the solution to be able to like put your own patterns but uh yeah so that is the burnout portions so not only are there the raised parts but there is also uh bits that have been burnt out to to the lower fabric. Which brings me on to the third part, chiffon. The lower fabric is a sheer chiffon. So that's what gives it its light and airy feel because it is a light and airy fabric. And uh, I don't know how well you can see, you might be able to see. So burnout, chiffon, jacquard. This is what this fabric is. It's a bit of a mouthful and that was a bit of an explanation, but hopefully you will understand the process just like a little bit more. And if you wanna have a go yourself, it's relatively, you know, easy to do. You know, maybe check a few videos first, a few instructions, but you should be fine, you should be fine. Okay, so now that I've kind of waffled into the technicalities of this fabric, let's just talk about how actually pretty it is, okay? Um, you know me, I like a good fruit print, I like palm fronds, I kind of like most things that are kind of tropical, and I don't know if you can get any more tropical than a flamingo. And uh, yeah, there's also the added palm frong, so you know, I'm super, super happy. Really, really happy that I found this fabric, uh, so much so that when I bought it, bought one set, and then two days later, I came back, and I bought some more because I thought, actually, you know what? I'd rather have too much of this fabric than not enough for what I'm planning to make. So that brings me on to the next bit. What do I plan on making with this? Well, 
It's gonna be a dress. I'm just gonna tell you that right off the bat. It's gonna be a dress, but I need a little bit of help. I've been hankering for some sort of like tea dress. I have recently discovered, I know, I'm a bit slow, recently discovered Reformation. Their dresses, oh my God, they're beautiful. But also that price tag, like why though? I don't understand. So yeah, those dresses you can find in other places, but they're not as nice and in like the best prints as they are on like Reformation. So. You know, I'm sure at some point I will buy maybe one of those dresses, if only just to have a nosy and see how it's made on the inside, because I do that a lot. If I see a brand that I like, um, but I'm thinking, mm, I don't know, is it worth it? I may buy one piece that I really like, just so I can look at the insides and see how they're made, basically. So after looking at all those beautiful, beautiful Reformation dresses, and I think it says Reformation or is it Reformation? Who knows? After seeing those beautiful dresses and then thinking, mm, I'm not sure if I wanna buy one yet, maybe I'll have a go and see if I can make a type. Uh, the ones that I was drawn to the most are like the, kind of like the romantic tea dress types. Now, I don't think I am the romantic tea dress type, but I can try to be. And if I can make a dress that fits me perfectly, I will definitely look the part. I don't know if it was, kind of fits my style, but like, I also feel like I can be a bit of a chameleon when it comes to dresses, depending on the situation and where you're going. So with that in mind, I have these five patterns, which I think would suit this perfectly, but I'm having a bit of trouble figuring out which one I should do it because like obviously once you make it that's it this has got to be the one if I make it in this then that's what it is and I've got to love it let's have a look at the patterns and you guys let me know what you think so this is the first pattern which is a very easy Vogue this is Vogue 9350 it's basically like a wrap type dress with um, like long puffy arms and it comes in a long version and a short version. It's super, super simple to make, but it looks really, really nice. Like even the pictures look quite nice. It's the sort of dress that will, you know, hold up well with a busy pattern as well as holding up well with like a plain pattern. So I think this is a really, really good candidate. Number one. Number two is this McCall's pattern. This is M7834. Now this one I've been trying to pick up for a little while and I only picked it up recently because it kept being sold out and it's only in petite so and I'm not really that petite so I might have to do a little bit of finagling with this one number three is a simplicity pattern this is 8875 this is basically like a tea dress pattern that I've been looking for for a long time I've seen a lot of tea dresses I'm really into that kind of like romantic dress feel and like all the fashion right now is going through that whole like romantic dress moment and I'm really really liking it and this one is particularly good because it's gathered at the bust which means um, I'm, I'm not gonna look like super super busty it might actually be quite complimenting to uh, you know the boob area so um, yeah quite uh, looking forward to making this one up although I don't know if it will be in this fabric or in another fabric this one I'm not 100% sure about but I really do like the drawings it's a super simple dress uh, it's basically got a deep V and it's got a zip at the back and it's got full skirt with pockets which is always a win because there should be pockets and everything so this one I do like but I don't really wear full skirts that often like if I'm gonna wear like a big skirt it's like a maxi type skirt and it's not like a full circle skirt so I think maybe if I did make this I would go with the top half and maybe kind of make that skirt into like a fluted type thing instead of something so full I might cut it down to maybe like instead of a full circle maybe a quarter circle skirt so it kind of looks a little bit more a-line and uh, a little bit less flowy if that makes sense but uh yes I think this is a good candidate and this also is kind of dramatic with that deep deep V so I saved my favorite pattern for last because this is one that I've been looking for a lot I tried on a dress that was almost identical to this. I really liked the fit, but I didn't actually like the pattern of the fabric on me, but I thought if I can find a sewing pattern that is basically this, then I will totally buy it. So this is the tea dress, kind of off my dreams. All these like uh, drawings look amazing in it, but like I, I'm still, like even though I tried on a dress, I'm not 100% sure how this is gonna turn out. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of internet research, but this is the Vogue 9076. This is quite a popular style. I'm seeing lots of dresses like this, although I don't know if I would go with the full sleeves because, well, I don't know. Maybe I'll go for a short puff sleeve instead of like a long sleeve, but I really, really like this pattern. I particularly like that it shows you what it would potentially look like as a plain fabric as well as like a busy print so I think this one may be the winner but 
I don't know. So since I can't make all of these dresses uh, just to see which one looks the best, I'm gonna need you guys to help me choose. So which one do you think? Do we go with number one, which is the wrap dress? Number two, the tiered maxi dress? Number three, the button up tea dress? Number four, the deep V, possibly fluted dress? Or number five, the classic tea dress, which I guess is like my firm favorite right now. Okay, so now that you have an idea of what I'm planning on making, and hopefully you guys will choose the right one, let's talk about where I got this fabric, how much I got, and how much that it cost. Okay, so you guys probably already know if you watched my last video, I picked this up in Singapore. I picked it up at a place called Spotlight, which is in Plaza Singapore, a big shopping center at the end of Orchard Road, which is like the main shopping street in Singapore. Spotlight is one of my favorite stores to go to when I'm in Singapore for two reasons. One, they have a great selection of fabrics and the store itself is just absolutely huge. There is something for everybody in there and it's like a hobby store. So like whatever hobby you have, you've got the tools for it in there. So it's a really, really good place to go. And second, it is air conditioned because it's in a shopping mall and you know that Singapore can get pretty hot. It's basically endless summer in Singapore with the occasional thunderstorm. Beautiful, beautiful place. But that heat is like a hot, humid heat. So it's very nice to be able to be somewhere air conditioned, climate controlled, and you could just browse all the fabrics without like sweating buckets, which is what you sometimes do in the other places. But you know, like I wouldn't have it any other way. Singapore is amazing. So that's where I picked up this fabric. I actually picked up five meters in the end. So I started off with uh, three meters, which is basically this fabric here. And then I thought about it for like two days because it was running to the end of its roll. And I was just like, you know what? I think I want to be able to make something a bit longer, a bit more luxurious. And those call for like bigger lengths. So I went back and I picked up an additional two meters here. So yeah, so all together I've got five meters, which is more than enough to make something floor length. So this fabric costs 24 Singapore dollars a meter. And that works out to about uh, 13, 14 pounds a meter, which is can be pricey depending on what you're getting. But for a burnout chiffon jacquard, I actually think that's pretty cheap. Like I have paid more for fabrics that are plainer than this. So, you know, I was pleasantly surprised. Although while I was in Singapore, I was like, oh, that's kind of expensive. But that's because in Singapore, I'm used to seeing fabrics that are like seven, five, four, three, two Singapore dollars a meter because you get fabrics that are that cheap out there. Obviously there are other places you can go for like more specialist and more expensive fabrics. If you're looking for those kind of like silks and all those gorgeous chiffons and stuff, I would suggest going to Arab Street. That street alone, which you probably saw in the last bit of my vlog, I just kind of like walked down it. Uh, that street alone is where you get those beautiful silks and like all those beaded embroideries. And they're still miles cheaper than you, what you would probably get in like the US or the UK um, in my experience. That is my fabric and I cannot wait to show you guys what I make from this. But before we do that, you guys need to figure out which dress I'm going to make. Yeah, and, and then I'll make the dress and show you guys, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Um, hopefully that wasn't too long for you guys. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that thumbs up button, send me a comment, let me know which pattern you think I should use for this fabric. I'm very excited to see what you guys pick. And if you haven't already, then subscribe. And if you have subscribed, then hit that little notification bell so you can know when I upload, when I actually get time to edit videos. And with that guys, I will see you later. Have a great weekend and I'll see you in the next video.